Interested in what the Prime Minister of Israel has to say about cybersecurity? Yeah, we are too. Secure Ninja. Hi everyone, welcome to Secure Ninja TV. I'm Alicia Webb. In our ongoing effort to bring you a global perspective on cybersecurity, SNTV director and producer John Miller was in Israel last week attending and filming Cybertech 2017 in Tel Aviv. Israel is well known for its culture of security and there's a lot of cybersecurity research and development happening there. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivered a keynote at the conference and Secure Ninja TV was up front and center so we could share it with you. So, here's the Prime Minister's entire speech. You know, we, uh, we didn't have a car industry in Israel. We tried. We actually built fiberglass cars. They crashed. Now we have a different car industry. We have about 500 companies, startup companies, that are creating the software for the new automotive industry, for driverless cars, and for all the other applications that are changing or to revolutionize this uh, industry. Here's an opportunity. Here's also a problem. Because we in the, with the interconnectivity of cars and all the changes that you're well familiar with, you need cybersecurity. So here's another industry that's springing up here very quickly, very rapidly. It's called digital health. Israel happens to have one of the two best databases for its population in the world. And because of that, we have twin opportunities. The twin opportunities are preventive medicine on a vast scale in vast efficiencies, vast efficiencies. And also personalized medicine with fantastic productivity. But there is a problem with this new industry. It's called cybersecurity. And the same opportunities the same opportunities and challenges are everywhere. They're in uh, uh, every field of commerce, they're in agriculture, areas of security itself. Cybersecurity is a prerequisite. It's not going to solve the extent of the problems that we're going to encounter because the digital, the, the, rather the Internet of Things is going to create so many connections, so many trillions of connections, that it is virtually impossible to address them. We'll have to have many, not a solution, but an infinite number of solutions or an attempt to create solutions again and again and again. You're in a wonderful business. It's endless. But it requires, obviously, uh, gearing up for these specific challenges in a way, not in a way, in every way, it's a new kind of warfare. Very different from what we've seen before. A century ago, uh, soldiers hunkered down in trenches, uh, and in tragic circumstances, they slaughtered each other by the thousands, often by the hundreds of thousands. And of course, uh, 70 years ago in World War II, bombs rained down from the sky, and civilians were slaughtered by the millions. Today, warfare has changed, again, dramatically. Uh, I don't mean just physical warfare of the kind I just described. I'm talking about the capacity, and it's not imaginary, it's not futuristic, and it's not exaggerated. It's moving very rapidly to a situation where, with the click of a button, you can bring down nations to their knees very rapidly, if you so desire and if you're willing to take the risks, because every system can be hacked. So this new type of warfare gets more complicated by the day. And I believe it's no coincidence that you're all here in Israel. We realized early on that our small geographic size need not limit our cyber security capabilities. We're small and concentrated, so there are a lot of fine young people which means fun young brains that interact. So a few weeks, a few years ago, I set the goal for Israel of becoming one of the top five cybersecurity powers in the world. It's a goal we have met. I deliberately decided to place our cyber, uh, national cyber headquarters right next to Ben Gurion University. In fact, it's on the university campus. And so the world 
has the opportunity to bring the greatest cyber security firms to that small area in Beersheba. Beersheba used to be known for uh, camels. And camels and palm trees. Uh, it's from the days of Abraham. Uh, but now they're, Beersheba means seven wells. Now there are wells of uh, human creativity and cyber creativity. Everybody works together there in a small space. The government, academia, the private sector, the best young minds we have. In fact, I was uh, showing uh, Steve Forbes of Forbes magazine. I took him there a few years ago and just showed him this explosion that is happening there in all these companies. And um, one of these uh, young people looks familiar. And I said, well, who are you? I, I recognize your face. And he says to me, um, Prime Minister, you don't remember me? I was your NSA briefer, the Israeli NSA briefer. And I said, yeah, and, and what are you doing now? And he looked at me and he said, now? Now I'm rich. Wow. We are working together, all of us, to keep our country safe and our companies, and we should be working together to keep your country safe and your companies. We're developing and sharing incredibly powerful technologies, incredibly powerful, uh, to fight back against the threat of cyber warfare, which is a growing threat by the day. Today, Israel receives uh, roughly one-fifth of the world's global private investment in cybersecurity. One-fifth, it's about 20 percent, and given that we are one-tenth of one percent of the world's population, which it means we're punching about 200 times above our weight. Not two times, not 10 times, and not even 100 times. 200 times above our weight, which means there's something here that defies numerical size. And as I told you, I think it actually works to our benefit that we have this uh, concentration of talent here. I have to tell you that the story of Israel's high-tech uh, success is definitely rooted in our uh, experiences in the military, but it's also rooted in the experiences of Israelis who went to the other Silicon Wadi, you know, the one there, spent a few years there, came back, and the invaluable experience that they gleaned there helped create uh, our own uh, high-tech industry. So, by all means, bring your people here. They'll be welcomed with tax breaks and other things that can make their lives here, the, the lives of the, uh, their families as well, uh, comfortable and productive. Because I believe that by working together, we can more effectively defend the fo against the forces of terror, this cyber terror that threaten us all. When I said terror, actually there's a linkage between the forces of terror now and the use of uh, the cyberspace in uh, ISIS, its use of cyber tools, its ability to recruit uh, young people with vulnerable dispositions. It's also possible to fight them using these tools of big data, connectivity, and artificial intelligence. The same tools they use can be used against them and are being used against them with great effectiveness. Again, what you see today is going to get a lot worse in the future if we don't band together. That's why uh, I intend to raise the subject and discuss the subject of uh, uh, cooperation in cybersecurity in my upcoming visit in Washington with President uh, Trump. I had here a visit by uh, Rudy Giuliani who's a special advisor to President Trump on cybersecurity. We discussed some of these aspects, but again, I think that Israel and the United States, that are two leading powers, the United States obviously the leading power in the battle for cybersecurity, Israel, I would say, right up there. I think it's critical that we augment whatever each of us is doing alone by our cooperation, both on the government-to-government -government level and what we can do with our cybersecurity industries. It's not possible as yet to have a very broad cooperation 
for cybersecurity between many governments, but it is important to have cooperation between some governments, and especially like-minded governments. Uh, and that germination, I think, can come out of this uh, discussion uh, between uh, President Trump and myself. We've already had uh, important discussions with the U.S. government, but I think we need to expand this and recognize that there is a, a core interest of the civilized countries and the democratic countries to protect themselves and their citizens against cyber attacks. Israel is, is a secure and safe island. We have invested in our security in creative ways, successful ways, not only in the digital area, but sometimes in the physical area. And having said that, I spoke about our security fence the other day. You may have noticed it. Uh, and I take this opportunity to explain or clarify what I did and did not say in my tweet uh, the other night. I thought you'd be interested in that. I did point out the remarkable success of Israel's uh, security fence, but I did not comment about U.S.-Mexico relations. We've had and will continue to have good relations with Mexico. I've had a long and fruitful and very friendly relationship with Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto, and it will continue. We stand, all of us, at the nexus of big data, connectivity, and artificial intelligence. Great opportunities, but great challenges. In Israel, we're exploiting these opportunities and we're meeting these challenges. Uh, I invite you to do both with us. And it's my ardent hope that the nations around the world will come together to defeat our common threats and seize our vast opportunities. There is no better place to do so than the State of Israel. Welcome and much success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure you subscribe to Secure Ninja TV so you don't miss any of the great content that we shot at CyberTech 2017 in Israel. And right now, we're actually at RSA 2017, so there's lots of great content coming from here as well. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks for watching. Bye.